have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. The message unto you I'll give. Tis recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Look and live. My brother, live. Look to Jesus now and live. It's recorded in his word. Hallelujah. And it's only that you look and live. Look and live. My brother, live. Look to Jesus now and live. Tis recorded in his word. Hallelujah. And it's only that you look and live. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. The message unto you I'll give. Tis recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Look and live. My brother, live. Look to Jesus now and live. Tis recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Look and live. My brother, live. Look to Jesus now and live. Tis recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Well, God bless you. We're having a bit of a trouble with the conference call. Give me just a second. I'm trying to get back in. Okay, I think we're back in. God bless you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Mika. Good morning, Sister Eleanor. Good morning, Pastor and Lady Young and the your family and the Rock Church of Brockton. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Briscoe. God bless you. Good morning, Sister um, Mary, God bless you. Good morning, Mother Walker. God bless you. Good morning, Pastor and Lady Williams. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Stacy. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Pam. God bless you. Deacon Davis, Mother Davis, and your entire family. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Jackson Perry. God bless you, Brother Terrence, and your family. Good morning, Sister Mary. Good morning, Sister Burnett. God bless you, Mother Phyllis. Good morning, Sister Kathy. God bless you, Brother Butler, and your family. Good morning, Mother Holman. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Hunter. God bless you. Good morning, Deacon and Mother Wilkins, God bless you both. Good morning. Dr. Jennifer McCarroll Johnson, God bless you. Good morning. Sister Duchess, God bless you. Good morning. Sister Graves, God bless you. And Deacon Graves, good morning. Sister Jackson Perry, God bless you, Brother Terrence, and your family. Good morning, Minister and Mother Morris, God bless you. Good morning, Sister Smith, God bless you. Good morning, Deacon Grant, God bless you. Good morning, Brother Henderson, God bless you. And Sister Lisa, good morning, good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph, God bless you, your family, and all the saints of Trinidad, Tobago. Good morning, Sister Sutton, God bless you. Well, good morning, and praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to bring to you a biblical meditation and prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we see every day God giving us the strength to endure the challenges of life, to deal with um, problems and situations. And the answer is always prayer. Yes, God will. In fact, that's the vehicle by which God gives you the answer. 
We pray for an answer. We pray to hear from God. We pray for God to provide what we need to know. And God does it on a daily basis. As always, if you have a prayer request, we want you to share it with us. If you're on Facebook, you can place it right into the chat or you can inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you're on Instagram, you can place it into the chat or you can direct message Pastor RJD. And to everybody that's on the conference call, and we thank God for our prayer warriors on the conference call, everybody on YouTube, and we thank God for those that watch by YouTube. Everybody, anybody can text in your prayer request, and that number is 336 567 5358. Again, the number is 336 567 5358. You can text in your prayer request. We're adding them to the prayer list. We're praying over them, and we are believing God with you for miracle signs and wonders. Let's go to the word, everybody. We're going back to the 20th chapter of the book of Proverbs, and I want to read verses 13 through 16. Proverbs chapter 20, verses 13 through 16. The Bible says, love not sleep. Yes, thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. It is not, it is not, saith the buyer. But when he has gone his way, then he boasteth. There is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. Take his garment that is surety for a stranger. And take a pledge of him for a strange woman. I want to talk to you this morning from the subject true value. True value. What is the true value of the things that we possess? There's a debate often in what something costs or the value of something. And there can be a vast difference between what you pay for something and what the actual value is. You know, um, we are dealing with skyrocketing home values in this season. Cost of housing is um, astronomical in many cases. And young people who are starting out or people who are trying to get started in buying and purchasing um, a home, sometimes find themselves um, in a quandary because they have resources. Sometimes they have great credit. But if you can't find a house that is in your price range because the houses that used to be what we call starter houses, you could buy some of them even for less than $100,000 and in so many cases, your mortgage would be less than your rent. It just made sense to go out and, and, and buy. And then, but then to discover that the value is um, so astronomical, the cost is astronomical. Um, it is a negative thing to buy a house and find out that it's less value than what you paid for it. Um, in this economy, we are discovering that in so many cases, um, the price of housing is, um, or the value of housing is more than what you paid. Um, when I look at what I paid for our current home versus what is actually valued, we're, we're, we're in a, a better position because of the value of it. Knowing the value of what you have is tremendous. Knowing the value of what you have is tremendous. And that applies not only in the economic sense, but it applies in the spiritual sense. And a lot of times people don't realize that what they have is valuable. And when you don't realize the value of what you have, you are easily deceived into giving it up. You are easily deceived into walking away from it. You are easily deceived in letting it go. But you got to know, you got to know from the beginning that you have something that is valuable.
Otherwise, there are people that and if other people know the value of what you have and, and they understand it and you don't treasure it, you can easily lose. And, 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 and that's why in so many cases, Satan is trying to bargain with us. Satan is trying to deceive so many of us. Satan is trying to get trick so many of us into losing or not acknowledging the value of what we have in Jesus Christ. He'll make you feel like your life, hallelujah, sometimes is worthless. He'll make you feel like your joy is worthless. He'll make you feel as if, hallelujah, what you're dealing with, hallelujah, doesn't match up to what you really have. And you'll start thinking, I should give this up. I should stop walking with God. I should stop serving God. I should stop doing what I've been called to do because Satan sometimes does this scale where it looks like the pressure is greater than what you're getting from it. Hallelujah. And that's why the Bible says, listen to what the Bible Bible says the Bible says that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Yes, we're going through. Yes, we're being tried. Yes, we're being tested. And even the test, the Bible says, has an exceeding yields rather an exceeding weight of glory. The test is challenging. The test is difficult. The test has its nuances, but the glory that's revealed even through the test, hallelujah, has a greater weight of glory. Now he gives some practical advice here, starting in verse 13. He says, love, not sleep. Oh God, hallelujah. And some of us have sinned already because he said, love, not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. And some of us, my God, are dealing with the realities that once again, we're just lazy. Hallelujah. You can't spend your life in the bed and God knows I'd like to sleep and I like to rest and I need some rest from time to time, but you've got to be able to get up and get on with life. You've got to be able to get up and go about your business. You've got to be able to get up. They, they tell us often that is good for you to get up in the morning and put on real clothes. Don't spend the day in your night clothes. Don't spend the day in your house coat. Don't spend the day in your shorts, but get up and get dressed. Even if you're not going anywhere, get up and get dressed. Get dressed, go out, do something, walk the dog, go get the paper, go get the mail, but get up and do something so that you don't develop a love and an intense love for sleep because that intense love for sleep saps the body, believe it or not, of his energy and his strength. They did a study. They did a study years ago of four Four, I believe it was four or five young men. And for the period of about a month or three months, they made them stay in the bed. Other than getting up to go to the bathroom, these men spent every single day. These were young men in their 20s and they spent every single day in the bed. And what they noticed was over time, they developed weakness. Their bodies got weak because they weren't active. They laid there and their bodies became almost, hallelujah, disabled from doing nothing other than staying in the bed. They didn't get up. They just stayed in the bed. They went and found those same five young men, hallelujah, who were now in their seventies. They found them 50 years later. And this time they got them engaged in activity. They got them up. They got them moving. They made sure that they were active and that they walked and they exercised. And don't you know that some of those men had health challenges, but the activity, believe it or not, helped restore their health. And they all started feeling better. Some were already active, but the ones who were sick because they got active, they got to feel better. Saints, you got to be active. That applies physically and it applies spiritually. You've got to be engaged. You've got to be active. The enemy deceives us and the enemy robs us spiritually because we're not active. Worship is active. Prayer is active. Witnessing is active. Encouraging other saints is active and God needs us active for our own health and for the health of the body of Christ. Get up and get active. Don't love to sleep. Don't love sleep. Don't fall in love with it, but get up. He said, open your eyes. I love this. Open your eyes. The latter clause of verse 13, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Open your eyes. Hallelujah. You can't eat with your eyes shut. You can't eat snoring. You can't eat when you're asleep, but open your eyes and get engaged in life and watch God bless your life. Life. Look at verse number 14. It is not, or it is empty. It is not, saith the buyer. But when he is gone his way, then he boasteth. In other words, while the person is buying, and I'm a negotiator, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. I don't like paying full price for anything. So I'll negotiate and I'll walk around the car and I'll look at the dent. I'll look at the scratch. I'll find something somebody else may have missed in order to reduce the price of the vehicle. I'll do that. I'll do that and we'll t go back and forth and I'll make an offer. I, I'm, I bought a car one time and hallelujah had the money in hand and I went to the car lot and I saw the car that I wanted. I liked the car when I test drove it, but I didn't like the price. And I told the man, I said, you know, I, I, I picked the right day. It was a Friday. It was the end of the month when they're trying to make their quota of sales. And I, my son was with me. I said, watch this. I said, now look, I said, I made the offer on the car and I said, this offer is good until five o'clock. And then I drove away and I said, Reggie, they're going to call me. Hallelujah. Before hallelujah, I get get very far down the street. A few minutes later, the phone rang. Mr. Davis will take it. Come on, somebody, because they wanted to sell. And so I looked at the value. I knew it was overpriced and I brought the price down. And then, but just like the scripture says, after you've bought it, you start to boast. You lower the value. You try to lower what it's worth. You try to pay less than perhaps you should even pay. And then you go back and you brag. Now, there's I wasn't being dishonest. Hallelujah. But some people are dishonest. They legitimately lie and devalue stuff so they can get a better price. So you don't lie. You do fair dealings. It was a fair price. I checked the book value of the vehicle before I made my offer. In fact, they were trying to overcharge me and I got the price down. But I know this reality of people that devalue stuff just so they can get an easier or lower cost and then brag about what it's worth. In other words, it and they lowered the value in order to boost their hallelujah advantage in the negotiations. But notice this. Notice this in verse 15. There is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. Yes, gold has value. Rubies have value, but knowledge is more valuable. Let me say that again. Knowledge is more valuable. I know people say, hallelujah, that, but money is money, Bishop. Money is gold, Bishop. What you going to do without gold? But when you have knowledge, you have access to more. Let me just say it again. When you have knowledge, you have access to more. That's why they taught us in school that you wanted to train yourself for a career. Yes, some of my friends went right out of high school, went and got a job here, got a job there. And some of them advanced, but some of them stayed on that job and never advanced in life. I took the road of college, which was a road of four years of limited resources, had to work part time, had to go to school full time. And there was a balancing act. But when I came out of college, I was able to enter a career that sustained me for 35 years. That's the value. Hallelujah. Have the knowledge so that you can have the career. You can get a job anywhere. You can make minimum wage anywhere. But if you're trying to advance and be and, and advance in life, you need to go after training. This is in the secular arena. You need to train yourself to do something that's going to last to sustain you through life. That knowledge is a precious jewel. And when it comes to the knowledge of God, oh, hallelujah, that's an even more precious jewel. Knowing about God, knowing about the word, knowing and understanding the power of faith in prayer, because faith will take you where your credit can't. Let me say that again. Faith will take you where your money can't. Faith will take you places just believing God. You know what Jesus said? He said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find I knock and the door shall be open. And then he provides a promise with that principle. Everyone that asketh, hallelujah, oh God, hallelujah, everybody that seeketh, findeth, everybody that asketh, receiveth, and to him that knocketh, the door is open. What are you saying, Bishop? That's the knowledge of the word that creates faith. That's the knowledge of the word that creates, hallelujah, the, the, the mindset that allows you to receive from God. Because because when it's all said and done, saints, and I got to close, God is the ultimate provider. And you need to learn how to tap into God. I get it. Work hard. I get it. Educate yourself. I get it. Be able to.
to manage your resources. But when it's all said and done, you need to seek God because that knowledge is the ultimate access way to blessings, favor, oh my God, and everything. But look at verse 16. Here's a warning. He says, take his garment that is surety for a stranger and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. In other words, don't allow yourself to be seduced into helping somebody that is trying to take advantage of you. Let me say it again. Don't allow yourself to be seduced into take into giving up money, resources or guaranteeing or being a guarantor for somebody that you really do not know. How that some people would use their coat, hallelujah, believe it or not, as collateral and they get a small loan. They get something for the day, but they had to return either the money or the coat by the end of the day. Hallelujah. This was a biblical tradition. Sometimes women would seduce men, not because they were attracted to them, but because they wanted their money. Now, I know all of us brothers think that we're, hallelujah, a catch, and we think we're lovers, and we think we're this or we're that. Some women really just want you for your money. Not all of them, let me be clear. Not all of them, but there are some women that are chasing you because they want your money. And once they get a hold of your money, you're not as attractive as you used to be. You're not as sexy as you thought you were. You're not as sexy as you thought in your mind that you were. That woman was chasing you for your money. That woman was chasing you for what she could get out of you. And he's saying, don't be a fool in that. Don't indulge your ego. Oh, an ego is a dangerous thing. And a woman tells you you're the best looking thing she's ever seen. And that's probably not true. Hallelujah. She's seen other folk. Hallelujah. That are a little bit better than looking than you are. But she convinces you not just to get in your pants, but to get in your wallet. Oh, hallelujah. So be careful That's the warning coming from the scripture today. Understand what is true value. That's the point. Understand what is true value. And someone once said, only what you do for Christ is going to last. When it's all said and done, everything in this world is going to go up in flames. The Bible says the world's going to be melted in a fervent heat. Hallelujah. The Bible says that we brought nothing into this world. And it's clear that we won't take anything out of this world. So what do I need to value? I need to value Jesus Christ. I need to value his favor. I need to value his love. I need to value his mercy. I need to value my relationship with him above everything else. And when you have the true value of life, you have true wealth. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank God for each of you and thank God for this word. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My gracious God, I love you. I thank you for your goodness, your mercy your grace, your love, and your kindness. Lord, I thank you for just this day. Thank you for last night's rest, and thank you for waking us this morning in our right minds. We were able to get out of the bed, and we were able to get prepared to join this great cadre of believers, God, from all over the world. I thank you today for the morning prayer family, and I thank you, God, for every single believer my God, that is here this morning. I thank you, God, for, hallelujah, everybody that's come by Facebook, hallelujah, Instagram, hallelujah, YouTube, and hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, and the conference call. And I want you to glorify yourself on this prayer line today. Flooded, Lord, with your glory, with your presence, to the end that somebody is touched and delivered, a God, and set free today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Christ. God, I'm praying today, hallelujah, for Bishop Monty Norwood as he travels in South Africa. I'm praying for Pastor Roosevelt. I'm praying for Pastor and Lady White today, for Bishop Terry Hicks and his family, for Pastor Turner, for Elder Michael Bowie, for District Elder Willie, hallelujah, and Lady Shy. I'm praying, my God, for Pastor and Lady Chetram this morning, for Pastor Pinnock and family, for Pastor Clifton Wood and family and his church family, for Pastor and Lady Bradley, for Apostle Marcus Day. Daniel and his ministry, for Elder Michael Vergas and his family, God, for Elder John Williams of Augusta, Georgia, for the New Hope Way of the Cross Church today, for the Refuge Temple Church of Burlington, for the Refuge Temple Church of Columbia, South Carolina, for 
Greater Refuge Temple of New York City, Greater Refuge Temple of Washington, Greater Refuge Temple of Charleston, Greater Refuge Temple of Lakeland and Jacksonville. I'm praying, my God, for Bishop Thomas. I'm praying for Pastor John Howard Sr. I'm praying for Pastor and Mrs. Barrett today, Elder Iris Cash. I'm praying for Lestine Thompson, for Brenda Gilliard. I'm praying for Kim Townsend Newkirk today. I'm praying for Mother Janetta Hicks this morning, Mother Shirley Owens. I'm praying, my God, for Stacy and Trayvon. I'm praying, my God, that you remember Stephanie Morton today. I'm praying for Mother Jones. I'm praying for Sister Ann Edwards today. I'm praying for Priscilla. God, I lift up today in the name of Jesus. I'm praying today that you remember, hallelujah, Sister Sheila Reed. Did you remember Dr. Jennifer McCarroll Johnson, God? Did you remember Irvin Johnson? I'm praying for Vanessa Chambers and her colleagues, the entire household of faith. I'm praying, my God, for the Leeward Islands Diocese, for the Ecclesia Diocese. I'm praying for Region 7 today, God. Every bishop, every pastor, first lady, the leaders, the members of every church. Lord, we lift up the overcoming church of Asheville, Alabama. We pray for Apostle and Lady Williams. God, we're praying for Bible Way number one. We pray for Apostle Sylvester Norwood. We pray for Veronica, for Brianna, for VJ, for Zamonte. We pray, my God, for the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, from the board of apostles, my God, to the board of ushers, every laborer, every worker, every member, every believer, every supporter, my God, of this great church. God, remember them now. Remember the unity of the church, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't let the devil divide us or separate us or hold us in bondage, but God, give us the power and the anointing and the faith, my God, to do your will. We pray, God, that you remember in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, the Austin family. We pray for Dexter. We pray for Sean, for Bridget. We pray for Susan Maynard today. We pray for Leon, all the, the Leon and Reed families. We pray for Mother Bernard, for Diamond. We pray, God, that you remember Breon. We pray for Tyree, for Bradley, for Tony, my God, for Ricky, for Robert Davis Jr., for Maurice Barnes, for Kia, for Angelica Bradley, for Dolores Washington. My God, save. Save to the utmost, God. Deliver out of sin and let them be born of the water and of the spirit. God, we pray, God, for the backsliders that you would reclaim and restore. And we pray, God, that you remember everyone that is downcast, burdened, broken, afflicted. My God, discouraged. God, that you would help them now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I'm praying today for the healing of the sick everywhere. Everywhere somebody's battling sickness, but God, we believe you right now for healing. We pray for Lady Davis. We pray for Geneva, for Dariana, for Azaria. We pray for Phoenicia today. We pray for Bishop Michael Austin. We pray for Sarah Corden. We lift up Mother Florence May, Mother Norma Berry. We we pray, my God, for Christy Harrison's husband. We pray for Mariah today. We pray for Barbara Daniels, for Miss Naomi, for Mr. Eddie. We pray for Miss Dalma. We pray, my God, hallelujah, oh God, for Miss, for Brother Adams today. We pray for Kevin Williams. We pray for C. Walter. We pray for Mark Bowman, for Mary Rogers, for Rachel Reese today. We pray for Jake Jones. We pray for Junior. We pray for Charity today. God, we pray for Aaliyah. We pray for Sandy Jones. We pray for Sister Black today day. My God, we're lifting up the sick everywhere. We're praying for Charity Stroman. God, send your healing power. We're praying for, oh God, Cynthia Jackson Perry. God, complete the healing process. We're praying for Kathleen Murphy Jackson. We're praying for Deborah's friend. We're praying for Mother Revis, for Mother Bryant, for Mother Sharp. We're praying, my God, for Sister Gertrude Austin. We're praying for Kiara Mitchum today. We're praying for Sister Daphne Bullock, God. We're praying for Sir Sister Black today, for Tina Parrish. We're praying for Zeline Richardson today for Bridget. We're praying for Sister Teresa Holt. We're praying, oh God, for Sister Anita Bryant today, for Mother Rashida Moya, for Sister Edwards today. We lift up Apostle James May in the mighty name of Jesus. We're praying for Mariah today, oh God, in your precious name. We lift up, hallelujah, Minister Perkins, Daniel Xavier, Deacon Adams today, Deacon and Mother Wilson, Deacon and Sister Harrison, Brother Phil Solomon today, Elder Toll's mother, Elder Toll, be with him, God, in the name 
name of Jesus. Elder Stephen Dokes today. We pray for Mother Virgie DuBose. We pray for Mother Mary Williams. We pray, my God, for Mother Lloyd, Mother Perry, Mother Meadows today. We lift up Missionary Janet Davis, Missionary Joyce Domingo, Missionary Gail Hardy, Missionary Marlene Roseman, Missionary Jesse Brisbane, Missionary Hodges. We pray for Sister Denise McLean this morning. We pray, my God, for Mother Elizabeth Wilson. We pray for Brother Carl. We pray, God, that you remember in the name of Jesus, Deacon James Grant, Philip Grant today. We pray, God, for Pastor and Lady Winston, Bishop and Mother D. We pray for Apostle and Lady Keith today. My God, we're praying, hallelujah, for Bishop Alfonso Brooks, Bishop Early Dillard. We pray, God, for Mother Shirley Clark, Mother Evangeline Jenkins, Lady Andrea Maxwell, Mother Close today, Sister Shakaya Polk, Mother Carol Coleman. Remember, my God, Bishop Richard Johnson, Bishop Richard Phillips, Bishop Reginald Griffin, Bishop Clonell Williams, Bishop Irving Taylor, Bishop Gregory Wilder, Bishop Larry Arnold, Bishop Alvin Palmer, Bishop Johnny Davis, Bishop William Jenkins, Bishop Stephen Harper, Bishop Brian Williams today. We pray for Bishop Thomas Aaron. We pray for Mother Viola Johnson today. We pray for Lady J, Lady Williams, Mother Hardy today, M Lady Barbara Vincent, Lady Pamela Davenport. We pray for Lady Deborah Carter. We pray for Mother Stokes today. We lift up Apostle Hugh Dale Rowe, Apostle Herbert Edwards, Apostle Leroy Joseph, Apostle Charles Williams, Apostle Sylvester Norwood. God, remember Brother Wiggins. Remember my God, Brother and Mother Sherrod. Remember Mother Garland today, Dr. Hayward, Sister Hayward, Dr. Hayward's mother. My God, we're praying today that you remember Mother Jill and Mother Pride. We pray, God, for Elder Mother Dugan, Elder Mother Murray, Brother and Mother, hallelujah, Chambers today, Mother Carter, Mother Moorhead. God, we're lifting up in the name of Jesus, Brother Keith today. We pray, my God, for Lady Stanton, Minister Carr. We lift up Elder Tyson and Elder Smith, Mother Foster, Henry J, and Brother Cliff. God, remember in the name of Jesus, Mother Tanaj, Mother Holman, Missionary Simmons. God, remember in your precious name, Cynthia, Catherine, and Duchess. We pray for Marlette today, for Maurice, for Tony, for Dennis, for Kimberly today, God. We pray for Cynthia. We pray for Mother Jackson this morning. We pray for Apostle Moultrie, God, in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that you remember in your precious name, God, everybody in every hospital, nursing home, rehab center, everybody, my God, even in hospice, because there you remain the healer. Lord, we're praying today that you look on the grieving people everywhere, everywhere somebody's lost a loved one, but we're praying for their strength. We're praying for your grace upon them. Remember, my God, Sister Tammy Patterson, oh God, and her family in the loss of her uncle and her cousin. God, remember Deacon and Mother Ganey. Remember Deacon Clark, Eleanor Simpson, Sister Croxton, Pastor and Lady Fears, and the Greater Ecclesia Church of the Poconos. Remember Lady Yolanda Thomas today. Remember, hallelujah, Sister Marjorie Thomas, the Thomas family, God. Remember Apostle and Mother Clark, and remember the Christ Temple Church family. We pray for Mother Beverly Hargrove. We pray for the Hargrove family. We pray for the Terry family today. Remember the Forehand family. Remember the Michael family. Remember the Jenkins family. God, remember the Davenports today. Remember Deacon Shannon and the Davenport family of Connecticut. Remember Edna Peace today. Remember Minister Leon Swanigan, God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for the Thompson family of Connecticut. We pray, my God, that you remember the Peace family, the Jones family, the Gunter family. Pray, oh God, for Kay Green and family. Pray for Miss Cardine Stephenson, my God, and family. Pray, my God, for the Ingram family. Pray for Deacon Edward Jones and his family, the Patterson family, Sandy and family, the Rankins family. Pray, my God, for Minister Carr, my God, and his family, Mother Sally Carr and the family. We pray, my God, for Sister Janelle Rousen and her family, the family of Kevin Ray Rankins, the family of Patty Richardson, the family of Frankie Beverly today. God, we pray that you would remember in the name of Jesus, Mother Moya, Mother Walker, Jalisa and Jackie and Jerry and Takesha and Phoenicia and Whitney and their families. We pray, my God, for Lady Maxwell, Charles and Cedric, Mother Close and the family. We pray for Dr. Carter and the family, Apostle Phil Shekinah and the family. God, we're praying today that you would remember the Quarles family, Mother Harrell and the family, Mother Grant and the family. God, remember the Groover family, the Kramer family, the Hargrove family, the Blunt family, the Bonhams, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family. God, remember the Meadows family, the Moyer family, the Perkins family. Remember, oh God, the Dockery family, Sister Pam, her mom, and her sisters today. God, I pray that you remember the White family, Anita and the Brian Hopkins family, Margie and the McLean, Melvin, and Street families. God, remember the Ransom family, the Jackson family, the Newkirk family, the Nair 
red family, the green family. God, I pray today for the Nunn family, the Umstead family, for Brenda and the Alan McNeely family, Sean and Monique and the Gary Porter family, Trell and Ryan and the Alan Williams family, Tommy and Michelle and the Clark family, the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdies, the Sneeze, the Washington Fields family, the Winninghams, God, the Bankses, the Wades, the Middletons, the Taylors. Remember the Felix family, the Zapata family, the Mannix, the Boodrams, the Gleans, the Arthurs, the Matherins, the Briggs family, the Taylors, the Phillips, the Josephs, the Davis family, the Allens, the Caldwells, the Hayes, the Moors. God, remember the Austins, the Harbisons, the Adams, and the Austin family. Every grieving widow, every grieving widower, every child, parent, sibling, loved one. God, remember them, comfort them, and grant them peace. Lord, I pray today that you remember the body of Christ, every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, every bishop and elder. My God, every first lady, all the pastor's children, mothers and missionaries, ministers and deacons, the young people of the church, God, remember them in a special way. Remember musicians, singers, and psalmists. Lord, the entire body of Christ, I pray for the church now, that you would bless and strengthen the church, that you would cover the church, that you would protect the church in the name of Jesus Christ. Help the church to know the true value of our relationship with you. Remember first responders, essential workers, firemen, policemen, EMTs. Remember, oh God, school employees and students everywhere. I pray, God, that you remember everybody that works. Cover them. Keep them under your precious blood. Remember, my God, in the name of Jesus, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, that needs a job. Oh God, make a provision and open a door. Everybody, God, that's on a fixed income. Everybody that needs provision, God, make a way and look on the homeless, my God, and open a door. And God, look on this troubled world, trouble everywhere, trouble all over the globe. But yet, God, we trust you to be the bomb in Gilead and the great physician. So God, heal the land. Heal the land from sin. Heal the land from hatred and jealousy and violence. Heal the land from injustice. Heal the land from racism and sexism and let your church be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. God, we need you today like never before. Strengthen us, help us, keep us. God, and as you bless us, we give your name the glory. God, the honor and the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on, join me right now in giving God praise. Everybody on this line, join Join me right now in giving God praise. Hallelujah. The Lord is worthy of praise. The Lord is worthy, my God, of praise. Hallelujah. He is worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love him today, saints, and I thank him today. This is my declaration for today. The lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. The lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. Hallelujah. You can do more with knowledge when it's the right kind of knowledge than you can do with money because knowledge gives you access, my God, to favor and favor gives you access to resources. And God is going to use the knowledge that you have in Christ Jesus, the faith that you have in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The confidence that you have, the trust that you have in Christ Jesus to bless your whole entire life. Your life is going to be favored because of your knowledge of the the Lord Jesus Christ and what he is able to do. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank God for each of you. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your morning is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This press service is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Thank God for those that join us by conference call. Keep coming, keep sharing the number and stay with us. You can also stay connected through our podcast, Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, and Spotify. All of this available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I want to thank everybody that seeds and sows and shares with this ministry. Your gifts help us to do the things that we need to do. And we thank God for the gifts and we thank God for each of you. And if you desire to be a blessing, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can also give online our website 
website is www.refugetemple, N is in North, C is in Carolina.com, refugetemplenc.com, and you can give on the donate page. You can also give via the Givelify app. Just type in Refuge Temple Burlington. You'll see a picture of the church and you can make your gift there. Or if you have Cash App, our Cash App is dollar sign, capital O N E, capital R E F U G E, one refuge, one refuge. And you can make your gift there. And we thank God for your giving. But we thank God most of all that you are a part of this morning prayer family because God is using prayer to bless people all over the world. So please keep praying. Please keep coming. And as you pray, pray for me. Pray for Lady Davis. Pray for our children. Pray for my father. Pray for my sisters. Pray for my in-laws, our nieces, our nephews, our entire family. Pray for Refuge Temple that God would continue to bless us. And let's pray one for another that the grace of God might cover us and keep us in the precious name of Jesus Christ. The Lord allow us to see the true value of our relationship with him. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless each of you. Shalom. Shalom.